Oh my god, the last time that I sat down, I literally was huge and so uncomfortable. This is crazy. Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, I know it's been a very long time since I have done a YouTube video. I have given birth to a, a beautiful baby who was in the other room with my mom. Um, I might grab her um, when she wakes up, but... For right now she's napping and we're good so uh yeah i wanted to sit down and film a video for you guys much overdue but basically i wanted to talk to you guys about my birth experience like my birth story and then talk a little bit about my postpartum experience so far so um as of yesterday i'm not sure exactly when this video is going up but um, I had her 10 weeks ago. It's insane. I literally have no idea where the time has gone or like what I've been doing for the past 10 weeks besides just surviving. Um, so yeah, let's just, I guess, dive in. I honestly have no idea where to even begin. So I guess we'll just rewind to March 22nd, 2023. 1 30 p.m i gave birth to noelle josephine moore uh she weighed six pounds 14 ounces and she was 21 inches long so i feel like she was like the perfect size like not too big not too small um my labor was around 15 16 hours and um i was induced on the 21st so um, I know a lot of people, when they hear about induction and being induced, they have like a very like negative experience or, you know, just negative connotation to being induced. Um, I know that I was like really scared because I've only heard like horror stories, like people saying like, oh my God, if you can avoid being induced, you know, don't do it. Um, so I was a little bit nervous, but they induced me the day after my due date. So I was due on March 20th and I went in for my induction on the 21st at nighttime. So they had me go in around 7 p.m. and the induction process didn't start until like 8.30 or 9 o'clock. And um, they, I don't really know why they only waited one day to do the induction. I think it had something to do with scheduling because my doctors don't let you go over 41 weeks. But anyways, um, they started the induction process. Um, it was crazy because when we got there, they hooked me up to the monitor and they were like, you are having contractions five minutes apart, you know, and they're pretty like decent contractions. Like you could see them on the monitor. And I like literally felt absolutely nothing. I was like, what are you talking about? Because, you know, they say when your um, contractions are, you know, that regular, um, to head to the hospital and I was like I had no idea so I think my body was kind of like going to go into natural labor soon anyway based on that information so uh yeah they saw that on the screen and they induced me with Cervidil it's like something that they like insert into your cervix and it's supposed to like help things move along so um yeah had that in for I think from like nine o'clock um, and then I think around midnight I started like feeling the contractions more because I was just like chilling there in bed and like, you know, just hanging out and, you know, slowly I started to feel them coming on and, uh, yeah, so around midnight I was like getting uncomfortable because they were getting way more intense and, I don't know how to describe it. It wasn't as painful as I thought. I think the worst part about it is that they were just right after each other. Like they were like one minute apart. Like they just were kept coming and coming. And as soon as like one like ended, it just started right back up again. So I feel like that was the hardest part for me. Like I was just so exhausted. And the fact that, you know, normally I would go to bed at that time, but I was just had to stay up because obviously these contractions were, um, taking a lot out of me um they were too painful to sleep through so I think that was like the hardest part for me I was like so exhausted and you know it just could not catch a break and I don't know if this is just me but I personally feel like my period cramps are way worse than the contractions were because a lot of people say they feel like period cramps I didn't feel like that at all like the entire like feeling of it felt way different to me it just felt like someone was like squeezing the 
um, insides of my body like with like a vice and it was just like so much like intense like pressure not so much like a pain but it was just like really really intense and I don't know my I guess my period cramps are like pretty intense because I thought those were way worse and even like the afterbirth cramps those were way worse for me pain wise um so yeah uh, it was getting like really unbearable <laughs> and there was no epidural at this point. And then at about, I think it was like 3 a.m., my water broke on its own so they didn't have to break my water. And after that, they were able to give me my epidural. That went really smoothly. Um, I had no issues with that. I was like, sign me up, okay? Sign me up for that. I want that now. Um, so they gave me the epidural and... Um, so after that, they were kind of seeing how my um, contractions were going and they weren't like progressing more after a few hours. So they put me on Pitocin. I think that was around maybe like 10 a.m. And then um, it's kind of all just like a blur. I, By the way, the epidural did not make me feel like I was high or drunk. I was really looking forward to that. That did not happen. I just felt like chill and it took away um, like the pain and took the edge off. And so I couldn't con couldn't feel the contractions as much. Um, then what happened? Oh, I had like that bloody show experience. And then shortly after that, like it was show time. They're like, okay, we're going to have you start practice pushing. So I did some practice pushing. I think that I, that started around like 1230. And then at one o'clock, I really started like legit pushing and they had to like turn the epidural down so I could feel things more because I feel like I couldn't feel like how I was pushing. So they turned that down a notch and then um, I had her at 1.30 and I didn't like count the number of pushes or anything, um, but it really was not that bad. I expected way worse to be honest with you and why is my nose itching? I don't know why. Um, I expected way worse. It really was not that bad at all. I've been told that I have a pretty high pain tolerance and based on like what the nurses were saying, they were like, you are doing like amazing. Like you're not even acting like you're in pain. So I would take that with a grain of salt, but it really was not that bad. Um, the pushing part, like that part wasn't like painful. I didn't feel like the ring of fire or whatever, but it's just like an intense, intense amount of pressure. So like when you're pushing, and like the baby's not out yet, like that in between, like obviously you can feel like a bowling ball is like in between your pelvis and that's like really uncomfortable because they're just like stuck in there and you just want them out. So I feel like that part is just like really uncomfortable. It's like so much pressure. Like you have like a bowling ball there and like it's not moving. <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't know. That part, it, it wasn't so much painful. It was just like an intense amount of pressure. Mind you, I had the epidural. Highly recommend it. Um, and yeah, uh, she came out. Um, you know, they like rubbed her up, put her on my chest. Um, she latched right away. And it was really just a great experience. Um, Tommy did great. He stayed like up here, which... I'm glad because I feel like he would have passed out, but he did really great, um, you know, like holding my hand through the um, pushing and all of that. I don't feel like I could have asked for a better experience, um, maybe if it was like a tiny bit shorter, but yeah, like 15, 16 hours and most of it was like that overnight part. That's like the crappiest part because I didn't really get to sleep after. So um, yeah, I had her at 1.30 in the afternoon and um, I didn't go to sleep again until like 10 at night. So I was up for, you know, over 24 hours and just like physically exhausted. And I did take advantage of the nursery. Um, Tommy was like, please just let them take her. Because I was like, no, I don't want to keep her in the room. But he's like, you need to sleep. So, you know, that was nice. I got some rest. They took her, you know, they brought her back to me and that was great. We ended up staying two nights after that. Like that's their policy is like 48 hours after you give birth. So I was there like, was it three nights? Yeah, because the first night was when I was being induced and then it was like two nights after. So I was there for like three days and um, I used pretty much everything that I brought with me to the hospital except for my camera. No, I had no time for that, no desire for that. And I did not put on any makeup, so... Everything else that was in my hospital bag that I posted on Instagram, um, I posted a reel. I used all of that. So yeah, that was my birth story. It went really well. 
Um, I had like a few notes. Let's see if I missed anything. Oh, a lot of you guys asked me if I pooped during labor. I don't think so, but there's no way for me to really know. The nurses did not tell me that I did. And like I said, Tommy stayed back here, so he wouldn't have known that information, but I don't think that I did. And the main reason is because before I got my epidural, um, uh, the contractions I was having, it just kept making me feel like I needed to poop. So um, I just kept going to the bathroom and I think I got it like all out of me before all of that because obviously I wasn't eating anything else. So we shall never know, but I think I didn't. But I really, you know, I'll never know. It's a mystery. It's one of those like unsolved mysteries of the world. <laughs> Did SML poop during labor? <laughs> so now let's move on to postpartum and kind of like talking about um, things that cause me a lot of anxiety. So yeah, uh, the end of my pregnancy and right after having her, there were some medical scares for her, not me. You know, I had a really great pregnancy and I had no health issues with myself, but with her at the end of my pregnancy and then after having her, there were some scares and I feel like that has been like the hardest part for me. So at the end of my pregnancy, around like 36 and a half weeks, I went in for a growth scan and they um, saw something on the ultrasound um, with her heart. And so I'm probably going <laughs> to start crying. Um, so I was just honestly baffled because I just went in for an ultrasound. I thought they were going to say, okay, she's a little bit small or whatever, but they had me do the ultrasound. And then, um, I went back in the exam room. Tommy actually went with me to this appointment, which he doesn't normally do. Um, cause I just thought it was like a routine appointment, but he came with me cause he was off of work that day. So he was waiting in the car. And so they brought me back into the patient room and then all of a sudden they start hooking me up for a stress test. And I was like, I was like texting Tosh. I was like, what the heck? Why did they have me like on a stress test? Um, I was thinking worst case scenario. Okay. I'm going to be going into labor soon, you know, whatever. So they unhooked me and one of the doctors came in who I hadn't seen before because my practice has several doctors and I could just tell. As soon as she walked in the room, I could just tell like something was wrong. And basically she said something like, I don't know, it was honestly all blur, but she's like, we couldn't see your heart that great on the ultrasound. We need you to go to a pediatric cardiologist and have an echocardiogram ASAP um, because something doesn't look right. And I just absolutely lost it. <laughs> um, and so that was like on a Friday and I couldn't get in and t to see the pediatric cardiologist until I think it was like Monday or Tuesday. So those, that whole weekend, w Tommy and I both were just like <laughs> so upset because obviously it's her heart and what is more important than that in your body. So, oh my God. <laughs> um, it was really hard. Um, they did the echocardiogram like on my stomach and you know, they brought the, us into this room after with, you know, it's like this little room with a box of tissues in the middle. And I'm just like thinking the absolute worst, like why are they bringing me in here? You know, all of that. So what they thought it was, which they didn't even tell me, they did not divulge that information to me, which thank God, because the, I would have Googled it and it basically was like a 20% survival rate. Um, so they didn't see what they thought they saw. Um, there was just like a few minor things that some babies have and you know, it looked okay. But, um, after I gave birth to her, they were like, you need to go back and we need to, you know, do the echo on her. Once she's here, we got to do another one to make sure everything was okay. So, um, that was an appointment that I had like right after a few days after giving birth, super emotional seeing my little tiny baby, you know, with all of these things all over her body, you know, she's screaming bloody murder. That was really hard for me. Um, so everything seems to be going okay. We've had another appointment like that just to keep following up. So um, everything does look pretty good so far. So that's been great. We don't have another appointment for that until January. So that is a relief. Do you guys hear that? All right, I had to take a brief intermission to get a bottle ready for her. Uh, but yeah, where was I? Um, okay, so our heart checked out. Everything was good with that. Um, but when we were home from the hospital for a few days, I noticed something different about her eyes. 
And so Tommy's dad has this same thing with his eyes. Um, I forget what it's called, but his is just like a cosmetic thing. And so Tommy was like, you know, it's, she probably just got this gene from my dad. It skipped a generation or something. You know, I'm sure it's fine. He can see, you know, perfectly fine. Never had glasses until he was an adult. Um, but obviously me on Google, you know, you're searching these things and even, you know, at the pediatrician, um, they looked at her and they instantly referred us to a pediatric eye doctor. So that was another appointment that was really, really stressful because, um, this condition that she has, it can be just cosmetic, but it also can be, you know, vision impairing, like the, they can have partial blindness or complete blindness and it's something oh, no. <laughs> sorry every time she cries I'm just like I can't focus what's wrong um anyways they referred her to a pediatric eye doctor and that was another really hard appointment for me to just see as a mom you know they have her like eyes pried open she's screaming bloody murder there's nothing i can do um you know i'm just sitting there praying that the doctor is going to say that my baby's okay like she can see um she can see her vision is good we just have to you know keep doing follow-up appointments as she gets older to you know just make sure everything is going smoothly and developing as it should but these appointments were really, really hard on me and I just cried every single day, like all day. Um, Cause you know, on top of all of like the newborn stress and trying to figure out the newborn struggles, you know, I was just, this was all in the first month. So it wasn't like in the first week, like these appointments were spaced out and like before every appointment, I was just so sick. Like, can my baby see, is her heart okay? Like, is she going to have a normal life? Like it was just really hard having that on top of all of the other struggles and I just am so thankful that she is okay and she can see and her heart is just beating away as it should be um but that's something I had to talk about because it was something I really was struggling with just having like a mental breakdown every single day and just like praying so hard um <laughs> sorry it's just a terrible video or what I'm just like sobbing the whole entire time. Um, hopefully this isn't terrible, but I just wanted to share my experience because I know there's so many babies out there who, you know, you know, might have issues as well or scares, things like that. So I wanted to, you know, mention all of these like real things um, that I went through. But aside from all of that, the postpartum journey has been a struggle as well. Um, so that definitely, you know, gave me some serious kind of anxiety and depression. I don't know if that's actual, you know, postpartum anxiety or depression, but just like normal anxiety and depression from those scary situations. So we had another brief intermission, no big deal. Uh, where was I? Oh yes. <laughs> I was saying that this girl, I like to describe her as high maintenance because she is a little bit of a high maintenance baby. Um, she is very like particular about things. Like um, she needs to be held a certain way. She needs to be like facing out. She needs to be like seeing things. She doesn't like the swing. She doesn't really like the bouncer. Um, she doesn't like the carrier. She's just very much like a Velcro baby. She needs to be held. Um, we're only doing contact naps right now. She like refuses to nap in general. Um, she sleeps on average like 12 and a half hours a day, which I always heard and thought that babies just sleep all the time and they're sleeping all day. Um, and the recommendation I think is anywhere between 14 and 18 hours a day for like her age. She's not doing that. She's not doing that. Yes, I do wake windows. I do all that. And she's just like, no not having that. She likes her own schedule, okay? As hard as I try, I took the taking care of babies course. I've done all the swaddling. I've done the white noise. I've done all of the things, okay? So she's just very um, like fussy. She's not like screaming all day like colic. I think she's a little bit colicky, but she's not like screaming all day. She's just very like not 
chill <laughs> like you can't just like put her down and like go about your business and you know get tasks done like my house is a shit show it's disgusting um my dogs are driving me insane it's just like i'm so overstimulated when she's you know like crying the dogs are barking um it's just like a lot and she's getting a little bit better now that she is um like two months see what i mean these dogs ever since she hit like the two month mark she's getting a little bit better um she can hang a little bit more but she's generally just not that happy yet so that's like a little bit of a struggle because you know it's like try this for five minutes try that for five minutes and i feel like i see so many babies and moms on instagram who had babies around the same time as me and i'm just feeling like a failure like i'm like how are you guys like going out and doing like all of these things like i don't understand how it's possible like how are you wearing full makeup every day how are you wearing cute outfits every day like i don't understand how you're doing this because my baby won't let me do these things like i'm trying um but i can't just let her cry all day you know i could let her cry for like a few minutes where you know i'm taking a shower or something but i just i can't just let her cry you know um so that's been a struggle but we are seeing an improvement what else breastfeeding for the most part has been going pretty well um she is like 75 percent maybe like 80 percent breastfed i would say and then i give her like one to two bottles per day of formula and um i don't feel like i have to like explain myself why and i feel like there's just so much stigma around um using formula but she's mostly breastfed and it's working for us to incorporate a little bit of formula here and there so um please don't shame me it's what's working for us and you know she's um doing well and hitting her milestones and she's growing good so we're gonna keep with that and i would appreciate it if you didn't shame me for my choices um uh, i know a lot of people like think that people like shame others for breastfeeding but i feel like it's the opposite i feel like people will like think you're a terrible human if you decide to give your baby formula at any point in life i don't know i feel like that's how it is anytime that i'm on social media and you know like looking at content and comments and things like people are just like breast 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 but if you can't or if you're having issues or whatever supply demand all that like the people are like quick to shame for formula and act like it's poison so please don't shame me on that <laughs> speaking of being fed i feel like feeding myself has been one of the struggles um, i've been doing so much like doordash uber eats things like that because i have not driven with her really on my own yet i have like a fear of that that i'm working on um but yeah one of the things i can suggest the most is to try to figure out your meal situation because i don't know about you guys but i have literally no free hands to be cooking dinner like i need something that's so freaking easy so it's very minimal it's either takeout or my factor meals which spoiler alert they are sponsoring today's video i know you guys always hear me talk about my factory meals but they are truly a godsend in a situation like this when i have no time no hands to be making meals so if you're not familiar factor delivers fresh never frozen like gourmet meals to your home they actually taste really good and so you just pop them in the microwave for two minutes and you know when you have like a screaming baby two minutes is like an eternity so these are you know just game changers for me so this is um the garlic and herb chicken breast they have so many so many different options out there um if you're like a picky eater i guarantee you can find something you like and like i said they actually taste good i'm gonna continue to use these and like my postpartum like weight loss journey they have calorie smart options they have um, protein plus options they have keto if you're into keto vegan vegetarian all sorts of options like that for someone um it's definitely way healthier and cheaper than takeout so i need to up my game on the factory meals um they also have breakfast which i didn't even know i need to start ordering the breakfast meals because i don't know about you guys but i love like breakfast for dinner sometimes so yeah these come in clutch even if you're not you know postpartum if you are just a busy person or you hate going to the grocery store they are just so convenient and i really love the factory meals so that's why i keep doing sponsored videos with them because i really 
really enjoy their meals. So yeah, if you guys are interested, you can head to factor75.com or click on the link below and use my code stuffletta 50 to get 50% off your first factor box. So I'll have all of that linked below for you guys. And yeah, postpartum body issues, got them. <laughs> uh, I still have like 20, 25 pounds to lose. I don't feel great in my body right now. But I know that's normal. I just need to give myself time. As far as working out, I have no time. Because like I said, this baby, she won't let me <laughs> do much. But we have been going on walks and, you know, trying to do a few miles here and there with the stroller. She doesn't hate the stroller. It usually takes her like 40 minutes to fall asleep in the stroller. So I feel like she's like my motivation buddy because once she does fall asleep, I'm like, oh my God, I need to keep her asleep. So then I walk like an additional like 10 to 15 minutes to kind of prolong that nap if I can. Um, so that that's pretty much all I'm doing right now. When she gets better and you know, more relaxed and can just hang out there for a minute, I'm definitely gonna start doing the Pilates class it's just literally called the Pilates class. I'm gonna start doing that again because that was like my favorite workout to do before getting pregnant. I didn't work out at all during my pregnancy and I don't really regret that. I don't feel like my body would be much different. Um, but yeah, I gained like 45 pounds, maybe like 50-ish. Yeah, like 45, 50 during my pregnancy. And at my six week checkup, I had only lost I want to say like 20 or 25 so yeah i have like 20 pounds to lose and you know it is what it is it's not going to be a bikini season for me this summer but yeah i gotta find some cute one pieces but yeah none of my clothes fit me so don't ask me how i snap back because we are still trying to snap okay there's a lot of snapping that still needs to happen so if you're in the same boat as me i feel you if you don't like how you look it's fine like it's okay to say like okay i don't like how my body looks right now but that doesn't mean i'm gonna hate my body forever i just have to keep reminding myself that you know it took 10 months to gain all this weight it might take me 10 months to lose it all it might take me more than that you know um i think the biggest thing for me that i cannot stand is the size of my boobs right now like because i have breast implants which hasn't affected my breastfeeding situation i don't think at all um, they just are like G's, H's. I don't even know what size, bra size I am right now, but it's just, they are a lot. <laughs> and, um, I was thinking about getting my breast implants removed before ever getting pregnant. And now that I have the situation, I'm like, I can't wait to get them out. Um, it's been like eight years, so I would need to be getting them redone anyway. I don't know if I'll redo them or just remove them. I don't even know, but yeah, I'm <laughs> really over the boob situation. They're heavy. They hurt my neck and my back and I'm over them. <laughs> and they, I feel like they make me look way bigger than I am. They probably weigh, I don't know, 10 pounds just in boob. I don't know. What else? Oh, a lot of you guys asked me about like belly, like wraps and like um, belly binders. I can't even think of what the, the brand is. I'll have to put it on screen. But I tried a few from that brand and I actually tried like just like uh, there were leggings that had just like a very like... Uh, compression in the middle and they were making me feel physically like so nauseated and at first I didn't understand where the nausea was coming from and then I linked it to these um, like waist cinching things that I was trying and I just started googling them and I guess that's like a common thing but basically it's like trying to like put your organs back into place and it was making me so incredibly nauseous and then also it felt like someone like punched me in the stomach so I don't recommend any of that who knows if it makes your waist like smaller, but I don't recommend that because it was making me feel horrible. Like I was like, felt like I was back to being pregnant again. Like the nausea was so bad and then it was like painful and I would just would not do it. I don't think it's worth it for me in my experience, but I didn't have a C-section. So I don't really know if that's more for people who have C-sections, but another thing that I wanted to address because a lot of you guys have been asking me this, especially if you follow me on Instagram, you will have noticed that I have not posted my baby's face yet. And this is something, this wasn't something that I had uh, originally planned on doing. Um, but the main reason behind it is that Tommy did not want her on social media yet at all. And so we kind of compromised to just not show her face yet. And in the beginning, I would like, 
was like ugh, kind of upset with him like I really wanted to be posting her all the time and then I like had to take a step back and I'm like why do I need to post my baby so much and then I got to thinking about it and it's been kind of nice to just have you know some special private thing just for us and our family and things like that and also in this day and age like I feel like when we were growing up like if you're the same age as me um, you know, we didn't get exposed and start posting ourselves on the internet until we were like teenagers and now it's like from birth on like you're on the internet everywhere and that's like kind of crazy that it's just like every single part of your whole life is like pretty much gonna be you're gonna be on the internet your whole life and it's just seems kind of wild to me so at some point I definitely you know will share with you guys but it's been nice to kind of have like just that private stuff just for us and she's cute she's really freaking cute okay don't get it twisted like it's not like okay I have like a weird looking baby or something I mean it, that's like really vain to say but I think some people were thinking that I don't know um other people were like oh my god you think you're so famous you have to like not show your kid's face no it's not that um but the other thing is like I've had so many of my photos of myself stolen and you know, they're, they're on Amazon selling wigs, selling hair extensions. There's other people using my photos of me with like my family and friends as like, catfish. And like that shit is weird to me. So that's like a whole nother thing. And then just like the internet is like a really scary place. So there's a lot that's involved. But at some point we will show her and you will get to see how beautiful she is. She's really cute and sweet and just a little cranky. But she's so sweet and cute. And she's at that stage right now that she's talking a lot or not like talking but she's like cooing a lot and she's you know reaching for things she loves eating her hands she just always is like <sniffs> um trying to avoid the thumb sucking though so we do use a pacifier um but yeah she's just becoming like more like a baby now and less like a, a newborn like i feel like because she has so much hair like sometimes i look at her i'm like are you like a toddler like why do you have so much hair like she has so much hair and i didn't have any heartburn so i feel like that's a myth because a lot of people are like oh my god you must have had the worst heartburn ever and i'm like literally none i've never had heartburn in my whole life knock on wood i don't even know what it feels like but yeah she's just i'm i love her so incredibly much and even though i've had a lot of like struggles with you know trying to figure her out she's a good baby and she sleeps good at night so i can't be too mad at her um it's just crazy that the things that help her sleep at night don't work during the daytime but i think we'll figure it out but for now we will just snuggle and do all the contact naps and i'll just try to savor them because i know that i will look back and miss them someday because she won't be little forever like i just feel like she's already getting so big and it's just so crazy and i just love her so much she's in the other room she's like two walls away and i'm just like i miss you <laughs> it's so crazy it really is as indescribable as people say like they say like you don't know love until you have a child and it is so true it's just like they are your whole world like they're what you think about all the time um and you just that's that's it just consumes you but it is kind of cool to see yourself grow as a person because it's not that i was like a selfish person before but my whole life i've never had to think about like another human being besides like you know my husband he's all right <laughs> but it's just not the same like you can see yourself becoming more selfless like you don't really care about these little tiny things like I haven't even done any lick of decorating or buying any furniture. Like before, when I was pregnant, all I could think about was like, oh my God, I have to buy this furniture, that furniture. I haven't done one single thing since giving birth. And like, it's just cause it, it doesn't matter. Like nothing else matters and it's insane. But I just can't wait to see her grow and experience life with her and see her like, do all these things like every time I look at something like they just poured the sidewalk in the front of our house um and I just was like oh my god she's gonna be like playing hopscotch like on these little sidewalk like it's just like everything you just see everything in a different light sometimes in a scary way but a lot of times in a happy way and I just I'm so excited to do life with her and yeah so I think that's gonna wrap up this video I think that I covered pretty much everything that I wanted to cover. I'm definitely going to do 
um, videos on you know what products we've been loving I just really wanted to talk about all of this first and then dedicate videos to like what um, products I would recommend and not recommend and all of that so hope you guys enjoyed this video I know it was long as fuck <laughs> uh but i love you guys thank you for hanging in there with me should i go get her i wonder if she's awake all right so i just had a grab from grandma really quick i'm not gonna show you guys your face don't get mad i know some people like literally are sending me like hate dms like so mad that i'm not showing you her but i will tell you that i feel like she's a really good mix of tommy and i based on what i've heard from other people um Sometimes she looks just like Tommy, sometimes she looks just like me and my baby pictures. Um, but she's a good mix. I think she's going to have blue eyes. It's hard to tell because Tommy has light green eyes. Say so yeah, I might have blue eyes like mommy. Um, we're not sure, but they are definitely, they're, they're, they're going to be light. So, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see, baby. Ow! Ow! So at her appointment last week, she was... Um, in the 88th percentile for height <laughs> and 30th percentile for weight. So, I don't know. Are you going to be a skinny supermodel? Or are you going to be a supermodel with your long leggies? <laughs> okay, all right. All right, so I think we're going to have to wrap up the video because she's like, why is my mom not paying attention to me for hours on end? But I love you guys. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and bearing with us during the postpartum journey. <laughs> yeah, okay. And I'll see you guys next time. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ah, let go of my hair. Let go of my hair. <laughs> you just ate a whole four ounces. So why are you acting like I don't feed you? You're not going to get any nutrients from sucking my arm. <laughs> okay, we'll see you when we see you.